This is module seven, lesson two, square roots. We're still working with our standards that deal with using rational approximations of irrational numbers to compare size and also using square roots and evaluating square roots um, of small numbers, small perfect squares and cube roots of small perfect cubes. OK, but we're going to be approximating square roots here. So today we're going to find the square root for perfect squares. We're going to estimate the square root for numbers that are not perfect squares. We're going to find the locations for values of square roots of non-perfect squares on the number line. This is all in Eureka Module 7, Lesson 2 in the workbook. Okay? So, first things first, let's just kind of go back and remember what our square roots are, what our squares are. We we'll keep reviewing. Zero squared. When you say squared, that's times zero times zero, which is zero. Okay, one squared is one. Two squared is is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25. And I keep doing these because you're gonna need to know these. Six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, eight squared is 64, nine squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, we're going to skip 14, 15 squared is 225, okay? Those are our perfect squares, these are called perfect squares, okay? Because I can take an integer and square it and I'm going to get that number, all right? Now, let's do a review real quick of how to estimate this uh, value of square roots. If we've got a non-perfect square, something like the square root of 41, let's think what two perfect squares that would be between, okay? Well, let's think up 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, okay. All right, so the square root of 49 is 7. So we're talking about a number that's between 6 and 7. 6 squared is 36, so c square root of 41 fits between these two. So this is going to fit between the square root between 6 and 7. The square root of 41 is between those two. How about the square root of 7? What two perfect squares would it fit between? Well, let's see. How about the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of 4, which is 2? It's going to fit between 2 and 3. Square root of seven would fit somewhere between two and three. It's gonna be two point something, right? This is not quite three, it's two point something. Square root of 28, let's see where the square root of 28 would be. Let's see. We know the square root of 25 is five. See, that's on the low side of this. What would be on the next side? That would be six for the square root of 36. So square root of 28 fits between five and six. There it is, square root of 28. Now let's do the square root of 90. Let's see what it fits between. Well, we know the square root of 81 is 9, and we know the square root of 100 is 10. So this would fit between 9 and 10. The square root of 90 would be between these two. Look at it. Square root of 7, 28, 41, and 90. See? They're in order, numerical order. So this makes sense. All right? Now, let's go to your workbook. This is workbook page, well, let's find it. Workbook page 15, okay? We're on workbook page 15 here. This is to determine the positive square root of 81. Well, let me show you what they're talking about, the positive square root of 81. Throw in a sheet here real quick and we're gonna, well, uh, hold on a second. Let's see, the positive square root of 81. Let me show you a couple of things about square roots here. We'll go back to this page. Okay. It says the positive square root. Why are they saying the positive square root? Well, let me show you something about square roots and squares. If I were to take a number, any x, and I were to square it, that means I'm multiplying that number times itself twice, right? 
So if I'm looking for the square root, it's the opposite of that. The square root of a number. Let's say I'm looking for the square root of 4. That would give me 2. You think it's 2, right? Because why? Because 2 times 2 equals 4. Well, is there anything else that you could multiply by, yourself, by itself and still get 4? How about negative 2? What if I multiply negative 2 times negative 2? Negative times a negative is a positive. Wouldn't I get a positive 4? So the bottom line is when you're looking for the square root of 4, guys, it can be expressed as two different ways. It can be positive or it can be negative. Both of those numbers could give me the square root of 2. When it says x squared is equal to, if x squared is equal to 4, that could either be 2 or negative 2. Why? Because 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. And negative 2 squared would be equal to negative 2 times negative 2, which was also 4. Sometimes I even express it this way, guys. Whenever you're talking about the square root of a number, if I'm talking about the square root of 4, they may even say positive or negative 2. Or in this case, our square root could be either positive or negative 2. So when they talk about a positive square root, they're talking about a positive number. All right? Down here, they ask you to determine the positive square root of 81. So they don't want the negative 9. We know that the square root of 81 would be 9. Oftentimes when they're looking for the negative square root, they'll show it that way. But this is the positive square root of 81, which is 9. Okay? How do I know that's the case? Because 9 squared is equal to 9 times 9, which is 81. It says determine the positive square root of 225. So we're looking for the positive square root of 225, which would be 15. Explain, that means because 15 squared is equal to 15 times 15, which is 225. Okay. Three, determine the positive square root of negative 36. Okay, now here's your problem. Is there any two numbers that could give you, any two numbers you can multiply by yourself and get negative 36? Well, let's try that. I know when I'm talking about 36, okay, that if I'm talking about what squared could give me 36, well, I could do 6 times 6, right? Because 6 times 6 is 36. And I know that negative 6 times negative 6, negative times a negative is positive, would give me 36. But what could I multiply by itself and get me a negative 36? Well, I know you're going to say, well, what if I say 6 times negative 6? Well, the problem with that. It does give me negative 36, but 6 and negative 6 are not the same number, so you're not squaring something. There is no way to find uh, the square root of something of a, of a negative number. Nothing, there's nothing you can square to get a negative number. So anytime they ask you for the square root of a negative number, it does not exist. There's nothing that I can multiply by itself and get a negative number. Determine the square root of 49 if it exists. Well, we know that the square root of 49 is 7, positive square root. Okay, how do I know that? Because 7 squared is equal to 7 times 7, which is 49. Okay. Now, next page, page 16. It says determine the positive square root of the number given. If the number is not a perfect square, determine which whole number the square root would be closest to, and then use guess and check to give an approximate answer to one or two decimal places. Okay, positive square root of 49 is 7. Okay, that was pretty straightforward because 7 times 7 is 49. How about 62? It's not a perfect square, so I've got to figure out the two perfect squares it would be between. How about 64? The square root is 8, positive square root is 8. So you're talking about this being between 
square root of 49 and square root of 64, 7 and 8. Which one is it closer to? It's closer to 8. Not quite 8, but it's closer to 8. Okay. Now, let's kind of approximate what it's going to be. It's going to be 7 point something, approximately. And we can figure that out by finding a fractional distance here. It's 7, and let's see, the distance here, 62 minus 49. <coughs> would be 13. Let's see. Borrow one here. That's 12 minus 9 is 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, so that would be approximately 7 and 13. Let's find the total distance here. 64 minus 49. Okay. Borrow one. That's 14 minus 9, which is 5. 5 minus 4, which is 1, 13 fifteenths, okay? 7 and 13 fifteenths. Now, what we're doing is we're dividing 13 by 15. How many times will 15 go into 130? Okay. Well, let's see. Let's try 8. 8 times 5 is 40. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, with 10 left over. So it's about 0.8. So this is approximately 7.8. Okay. Let's try the square root of 122. Well, that's not a perfect square. What can it fit between? Okay, well, it's fit between the square root of 121, which is 11, and the square root of 12. Uh, square root of 144, which is 12. So it's going to be about 11 point something. Approximately 11. And what's it going to be closer to? It's going to be closer to 11. Closer to 11. Well, let's figure out how close it is. The distance here is 1. So we're talking about 11. This is about 11 and 1. And the distance here, 144 minus 121. It's 323, 123rd. So let's figure out what 123rd is as a, as a fraction, as a decimal. That means I'm dividing 1 by 23. 23 can't go into 1. 23 can't go into 10. 23 can go into 100 five times. 5 times 3 is 15. That's 10, 11. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 1 is 11. Okay, that's too much, so let's go 0 0.04. Let's try that. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me rewrite that so we can see it a little better. Too much stuff on it. Um, dividing 1 by 23. Okay. Can't go into 10. It should be able to, 23 should be able to go into 100. Let's see. 5 times 3 is 15. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 1 is 11. So that's too much. We're going to go 0.04. Okay. Let's see. 4 Oops, I keep messing that up. Hold on. All right. Four down three is 12, all right? Uh, so you carry one. Four down two is eight, and one is nine. So I've got eight left over. So it's 0 0.04, approximately 11.04 is what we've got for this one. Now, how about the square root of 400? Well, 400 is a perfect square. It square root is 20. Positive square root is 20. Okay. Which of the numbers are not perfect squares? That would be this 122 and 62. Okay. Now let's go to our um, problem summary, which is on page 17. A positive number whose square is equal to a positive number. It's denoted by the symbol square root, okay? 
The symbol square root automatically denotes a positive number. For example, square root of 4 is always 2, not negative 2. The number square root B is called a positive square root of B. Okay? The square root of a perfect square of a whole number is that whole number. Okay? However, there are many whole numbers that are not perfect squares. So if they say the square root, guys are talking about the positive square root. Now let's go to the problem set, which is actually on page... Twenty-three. Let's work the problem set together. Problem set. Determine the positive square root of the number given. If it's not a perfect square, determine the integer to which the square root would be the closest. Square root of 169, that means the positive square root of it, is 13. We're not doing two. Square root, positive square root of 81 would be 9. Now, we don't 147 is not a perfect square. Let's try to figure out what it would be between. So I've got the square root of 147. Wouldn't that be the next closest uh, perfect square would be 144, which is 12, and this one here, 169, which is 13. Okay, so this is going to be 12 point something. It's closest to this, so it's going to be 12 point some small number. Let's actually figure out what it is. They, we know it's going to be closest to 12, but let's figure out more of an approximation here. If I were doing this, I would find the distance here. There's a difference of 3 here in the distance here. 169 minus 144, and that would be 25, 3 25 So we're talking about 12, about 12 and 3 25 Okay, let's divide. 3 by 25, okay? 25 can't go into 3, but it can go into 30 one time. All right? So we're talking about 12 and 12.1, right? Approximately equal to 12.1. Let's try 5, square root of 8. Well, when we look to see what the square root of 8 is between, let's see. The square root of 8 would be between the square root of 9, which is 3, and uh, the square root of 4, which is 2. So we're talking about 2 point something, right? It's closest to 3, but it's 2 point something. Let's figure out the point something. The difference here is 4. The difference here is 5, okay? So uh, this is about 2 and 4 fifths. Let's see what four-fifths would be. Let's divide four by five. Five will go into 40, because it can't go into four, eight times. So it's 0. 0.8. This is about 2.8, okay? Now, which of the numbers are not perfect squares? 147 and 8. They want me to put these on a number line. So let's figure out where these would go. Square root of 32. Let's see which two integers it's between. Let's see. The next perfect square is 36, which is 6. So it's between square root of 25 and 36. It's between 5 and 6. So the square root of 32 goes somewhere in here. Between 5 and 6. Okay, let's do 12. The square root of 12. That would be between the square root of 16, which is 4, and the square root of 9, which is 3. Between 3 and 4 would be the square root of 12. Square root of 27, okay, that would be between the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 36, which is 6. See, 27 fits between 25 and 36, so this goes between 5 and 6. Would it be before the 32 or after? Well, it's 27, so it's going to come before it, doesn't it? Okay. Both of these fit between 5 and 6. To figure out which one comes first, which one's smaller. Now let's do 18, the square root of 18. Let's see. Wouldn't that be between the square root of 16, which is 4, and the square root of 25, which is 5? It's going to be between 4 and 5. Square root of 18. Let's do the square root of 23. And that's also between the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 16, which is 4. 23, would it be to the left or the right of the square root of 18? It'd be to the right, because 
square root of 23 is going to be bigger than the square root of 18. Okay, then let's do the square root of 50. All right. And that would be between the square root of 49, which is 7, and the square root of 64, which is 8. Okay. So between 7 and 8, we'd have the square root of 50. All right. Makes sense. 12, 18, 23, 27, 32, 50. Between which two integers will the square root of 45 be located? Well, we can just simply figure out. Well, we've got to figure it out, don't we? Square root of 45. Okay, you're going to have 49 on this side, which is 7. Okay, and 6 would be 36. So it's between 30, square root of 36 and square root of 49. 6 and 7. Here would be your square root of 49. Okay, 45. Okay. Now that covers everything for lesson 2. We have figured out the order, the value of, uh, or the order in which these would be placed based on their approximate value. We found the approximate value of non-perfect squares, and we found the, the positive uh, square root of perfect squares.